Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this input field which will reveal the password if you select on the I. We'll also be toggling an active state and an inactive state. Now I've got a live server open over here and I'm going to go ahead and create an index.html, give it some default boilerplate. If I, set, uh, sorry, if I type something like um, show password over here, save should get an automatic reload over here. So if I type something in here, save, we get something in here over there. Brilliant. So first things first, container, and then I'm going to add a form control. And then within here, I'm going to put an input. Uh, let's just leave it at that. Pa type is going to be password. ID is going to be password. And I'm going to leave it like that. Now I'm also going to be using for the little i. I'm going to be using a font awesome icon, and that is just an i with a class of fa fa dash i, and then I'm going to close that off. Now, in order for us to use this, obviously we need to call it in. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that in. This is just a link I had copied to my clipboard. Um, if you just search um, font awesome cdn. There will be uh, there should be plenty of these. So get started with Font Awesome. There's plenty of CDNs for you to just load this in directly. So we've got our CDN. Now let's get some default styles in here. So I'm going to create a link to a CSS sheet, and let's create that style.css. Save and save this, and then oh, default styling. So box sizing, border box. And then let's go ahead and style the background. So uh, body is going to have a background of hashtag um, six nine. Uh, sorry, six D. Uh, I'm trying to remember it. Nine eight eight D. I think it was. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the background color is. Obviously, I'm just wanting to make it as uh, as user friendly as possible. So font size. I'm going to use uh, eighteen pixels here and font family. I'm going to use Roboto. So let me just go ahead and grab that. Um, family Roboto. Let's just select regular. And I'm going to import this straight into the style sheet. So I'll copy that right at the very top. Brilliant. Actually, I don't even think we're going to type anything out. I did have a placeholder and I am um, on this at the very beginning. Um, sorry, a label, and um, I've just left it off because it's it's out of the scope. So we, I think we can just skate over that and just ignore that. Okay, so let's target our container and let's just style this so it's in the in the center of our screen. So container is going to be uh, one uh, one hundred viewport heights. Then the width is going to be one hundred viewport widths. Um, we are going to display flex just by center and align items center save great so now we've got our elements which are positioned in um, the middle of our screen and we can go ahead and style our form control now the reason i've got a form control in there is because i want to be able to um, uh, make this position relative and the, it's 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 the container of both of these elements so I'm going to basically, well, essentially what I'm going to be doing is positioning this I over the um, the input. So I'm going to go ahead and just say position is relative. And then let's start the input. So input, which is obviously where we're going to be typing, is going to have a width of, doesn't really matter, say 300 pixels, border of none. Um, it's going to have a height. This you can declare whatever you want on this. So I'm just going to use 50 pixels here. And padding, I'm going to say. Um, so I want the padding that I want on this. It, to to the right of it is the width that we want the the eye. So what I'm going to say is not on the top. I'm going to say 40 uh, for the time being on the um, right and not on the bottom. And let's just say 10 from the left. So. I'm going to see how that looks because I've, this is obviously zoomed in a little bit because I've, I've zoomed in. So this is what it would look like naturally. Um, 
let's move on. So font size, I don't think we need to declare that. Uh, box shadow, so let's go ahead with that. And say naught pixels, um, one pixel, four pixels. And then I'm gonna use an RGBA. Great, so I'll just set that to black and then 0 0.1 for the opacity. So I've got a slight uh, border box around it, uh, box shadowing around it. Okay, next I want to target the um, the A, uh, sorry, not the A, the, um, the I. So I'm gonna say anything with the class of dot .fa, uh, position is absolute. And let's just save that and then say um, bottom 20 pixels. I don't know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll change it in a second and right um, 20 pixels. Okay, bottom, let's just shrink that down a little bit, say 16. Okay, that's some, somewhere in the middle. Now, I'm skipping over this a little bit because, uh, you know, this is out of the scope again of the, this actual uh, lesson. Um, to, to position this in the middle, we'd probably use something like transform minus 50% of itself and, you know, stick it somewhere 50% in the screen. Uh, I'm just doing something really rudimentary at the moment. Now, I'm going to give this an active state. So when we click on it, the eye is going to actually change color. So I'm going to say um, active is going to be a color. Let's just say blue for the time being. We'll change that in a second. And let's just give the, um, the eye a, a color for the time being as well. So I'm going to say color is um 8d 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 Ooh. save that so we get um like a it's like a um inactive state and then when we click it it will we'll give it an active state which will give it this class now so if we have it set like that blue obviously that blue is horrendous but it doesn't it doesn't really matter i think it just it just proves the point so what let's just check that. okay Next, I want to add my actual um, script. So I'm going to come down to the bottom. I can say script um, source. Let's just call this script.js. Create a new file. And in here, we're going to, I want to target the I. So first, well, actually, uh, let's just use query selector. So uh, const I is equal to document.query selector. And I want to target the FA class because obviously we've only got one of these if there was multiple uh, you know favicon uh, font awesome icons then i would obviously need to be use something like a, an id or, or something but again because this is a relatively small application so const uh, password i want to target the actual um the, the password field so password is equal to document dot get element by id yep and just say password then what I want to do is I want to add an event listener to this uh, this I. So um, I dot add event listener, and I want to watch for a click. So whenever anyone clicks this, I want to do something. So let's just console log um, clicked. Lock down, save that, and let's make sure that this is working. So I'll go to the console, zoom in a little bit, reload, and there you go we get a clicked state. So now, relatively straightforward, all we need to do is we need to change the type of the password field. So I'm gonna, oh, I don't know what's going on there. Let's delete that. And I'm gonna say um, const, oh, const type is equal to password dot get attribute. And I want to get the type. Uh, you know what, let me just console log this just to show you what we're going to be dealing with. So whenever I click on this icon, I'm going to get the attribute of type uh, of this password field. So we know that this is a password and it's always going to be a password the amount of times that we click this. So what we can do is, well, we're, the, we're getting the type here. So we can say, well, actually, type is equal to password. Otherwise, it's equal to text. And then we can set it back to password. So, so that might sound um, like a little bit strange, but basically what we're doing is we're getting the type if it's equal to password. Otherwise, we're setting it to text, else we're defaulting to, to password. So now what we can do is, because we've used this ternary operator to just say, when I click on this, switch between text or password. So it's it's either going to be text or it's going to be password. And when we click on it, we can revert it to the, uh, the alternative. So if it's text, it will go to password. If it's password, it will turn over to text. 
now what we can do is we can actually set the attribute so where we're getting the attribute here we can actually set set the attribute so i'm going to knock down a new line i'm going to say password dot set attribute and i want to set the type and i'm just going to give it the type that i'm setting it which is going to as we said a second ago either be text or password i'm going to save that reload and let's just put some i don't know something in here I have a click on this we get something so it's turned it into a text password uh, text field and then it's referring it back to a password field now obviously we've not added that active state so let's just quickly do that so we've already got our i up here and we've got an event listener on it so because we've already got that we can just do i class list dot toggle and then we can toggle that active class so save this oh let's put some jargon in there um and take that off now we get an active and an inactive state so i hope that makes sense to everyone if you do have any questions as always please feel free to leave a comment down below but until next time take it easy